These are two of the free models I downloaded from the websites I just was showing you. It's great to download models so you can understand its structure, and this will inspire you on how you can recreate things. What tools can we use? In 3D, not everything has to be one piece. This could have been a separate piece. For the skill of it, and to challenge yourself, we'll try and make things in one piece, and we're gonna be using the multi-cut tool in this case. You analyze something that's made in the real world and you deconstruct it so you can rebuild it here. So in the real world, this would be a separate piece and this crossbar would also be a separate piece. This would be one piece, box, box, box. So you can figure out how to recreate this by analyzing how was it assembled in the real life. This one too, well this one has a lot more vertices. So why recreate something? One reason would be you just want to make it lower polygon count. And you want to be able to control the polygons also to make it a little more flexible like this going like all over this place. It'd be a little hard to expand upon it. Lots of wasted vertices like here. All these edges. So maybe you want to optimize the model without using an optimizer that doesn't necessarily make things cleaner. It just makes them less sometimes and less can add in some little defects here and there. So let's look at this one. Knowing that you know how to extrude and also the multi-cut tool and we're looking to do this in one piece. So one going this way, one going that way, then crossbars. All right, let's start with a box. There we go, we're done. Now we have a ways to go. At the very least I want to do the frame as quick as possible and it'll be in the style of this chair. I start extruding upward and let me go to face level, selecting this face. Let me just do, instead of extruding upward over and over again, let me just do this one long pillar. It's like a scale things later, size doesn't matter in this viewport, and this will represent this crossbar here. Well, how will I get this bow into it? Next week's lesson and lessons coming up, we'll be able to um, use lines. This will include showing you how to use Illustrator to simply draw the outline and bring it in here and then extrude from there and that will allow you to have the smoothness of Illustrator applied for creating objects within here. This week since we didn't deal with that I'm going to use the multi-cut tool to start with to get that curve. How would I get that? Well I'm holding down the control key as I slide on in. I'm going to just put a few multi-cuts. I have the control key and I'm just clicking as I slide up this object and let's say one over here. Next, to get that curvature, I bet you know what I'm going to do. Looks like these vertices. Can't just yank them up, then I get a broken chair. Interesting, but no. B key. And maybe the B key has to be a lot bigger. So B key for soft selection. Then as I pull this forward, we get that bend. I'm not getting enough of bend, so that means my fall off has to be even bigger. I'll just drag this forward. Say like this for now. That seems good enough. I'll duplicate this object. We already know how to clone. Hold down the shift key and just drag over like this. Let me take a look at that first front leg. If the front legs also had curvature like this one does, they're kind of symmetrical, but flipped over. I would clone these objects before I did something destructive to them, but I don't need to do that. They're just straight planks coming on down. I'm going to create a cross member, though, as I say that, this back is curved. Do I want to save a little time? Sure, I do. I'm going to duplicate this, like here, and then I'm going to rotate it, rotation tool. Hold down the J key as I drag it, just to make it flat. And then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Now how do I know how I rotate it 180 degrees, etc.? I could see I'm off. That's what the channel box is for in the attribute editor. Let me hit Control A twice, and here's my numbers. It did rotate along the Z, negative 90, but I'm 15 degrees off 
on the X. So I'll just I'll just type in 180 to line it up. And here's going to be a helpful thing. My manipulator is upside down. Why? Because I'm negative 90. Up here are three very useful buttons. This first one, center pivots, which I don't know if I really want center, but I'll show it to you anyway. Right now, pivots off to one side. Click that one. And now the manipulator is in the center of the object. So that's useful. Next will be delete by type history. We don't need that yet, but that one will delete the history that we've seen in the attribute error. We'll come back to that one. This one's the interesting one. Right now, everything thinks it's upside down. Watch what happens when I click this. Watch what happens when I click freeze transformation. Off in the child box, everything's going to zero out. The freeze transformation states wherever you are, wherever rotation you were at, forget about it. Now you're this. Now you are here. And any movement from there is a translation. So if I hit freeze again, and also the axis facing up. So that's cool. Now I have this curvature that I needed. I drag it forward. It's too thick. I'm going to scale everything. Thick and too big. Scale it again. Scale it. I'm trying to reuse what's there. Let me duplicate it. There's ways to duplicate with offset. We'll see that coming up. Now we can just manually eyeball it. That's enough. 